Hello and welcome to the report of round 5 at the BVP Limburg Open. And this round was all about um, whether Kuhn Leinhardt with 4 out of 4 was going to be able to hold his lead with black against Matthew Settler. But um, as we can see in the game, he never really had a chance, which sounds a bit harsh, but it's probably pretty close to truth at this point. So let's see what happened there. Settler went for the uh, same variation against the Grunfeld. And we actually jump right into a whole bunch of theory at this point. Um, so white castles queen side, black castles king side. And the thing is black doesn't really have much space, which makes it quite hard for him to develop his pieces. And it's also going to be difficult for him to launch an attack. Um, white plays king b1 just gets the king safe. Rook d8, we're still following theory at this point. Knight c3, queen e8. Queen c1, knight a5, and white just decides to go for the attack. Bishop h6, bishop takes, queen takes, black goes for e6, needs to try to create some space. Knight h3, probably going for knight g5, going for some checkmate on h7. Um, queen f8, queen f4, queen e7, we're still in book pretty much. Um, g4, and now the only game left went e5 for black, which is what I thought of a decent move at this point. Trying to block the pawns on the white squares, so you want to try and make this bishop look a bit silly. Um, but white went queen h6 in the game, and actually white is a very comfortable game, and can just, you know, um, slowly build his attack on the king side. So in the game, uh, Leonard decided to go for knight c4. Well, White obviously takes the knight on c4 because the bishop in f1 is a bit of a lousy bishop anyway in these positions. He took back with the knight and White played e5. And it already looks very good for White at this point. Queen b4 going for checkmate. Queen c1. And here Black is already in trouble because he doesn't really have a good move at this point. Mm, because if he wants to develop the bishop, he should either take on d5 or play a move like b5. Um, but after b5, for example, we can go knight g5, and the pressure on e6 is just is just building. And also h4, h5 might be coming at any, any point in time. I mean, when white gets this pawn all the way to h5, open up the h file is very dangerous. And but also the idea to just capture on e6 and just destroy black's king side is very annoying. So Lenas here made a decision, um, which isn't pretty, but I guess he thought he had to at this point. He took the pawn on d5, knight takes d5, and now black needs to take with the rook on d5 because, I mean, the queen wants to protect this guy over here, um, but also knight f6 threatening to win the rook on d8 is a threat, and well, as you can see, you can't protect both the knight and the rook with moving your queen. So he's forced to give up the exchange here, rook takes d5, rook takes d5, bishop e6. So he does manage to, de to develop his pieces. But white just goes back to d1, queen f5, he's trying some stuff on a2. I mean, you never know, you, you never know. maybe there's some sort of trick or checkmate. Um, but Settler of course saw this one coming, so played b3. Um, giving up the e5 pawn, but just allowing his knight to come into play again. Knight f4, rook e8. He gets rid of the bishop, rook takes. Rook d8 check, king g7, queen b2. Knight is pinned, threatening f4, so black goes f6. And the second rook joins the game, rook hd1. And why does he have an exchange for just a pawn, but he also has a much better position. So Lena decides to grab a pawn on f3, but now simply check on d7, king g8, queen c1, threatening queen h6 with checkmate on the 7th rank. But also a simple move like rook takes c7, followed by rook d8 checkmate. Um, it's very annoying. And at this point, what... Um, is just totally winning. So Lennart decided to resign the game and he never really managed to make it a fight. Because straight out of theory he was already in trouble. So a bit of a pity, but the strong game of Settler was now in the lead with four and a half points out of five. So let's see what happened on the other boards. Um, one person joining the lead is Preissers who beat Janssen with black in a very interesting game. Um, let me quickly go through the opening move. So we, we have the Dutch defense here. And we get a pretty well, somewhat standard position. Um, white goes for e4. Black takes, rook takes. Now the idea is to put pressure on e7. 
um, because that's, well, somewhat of a backward pawn. So Paisos decided to go e5, and this is where it gets messy. So Janssen played c5, check. Bishop e6, and Black is actually giving up the b7 pawn. So he decided to just take the pawn, but he missed Black's next move, which is quite strong. Black played to move bishop c4, protecting the knight, but also um, the queen is trapped at this point. So Black's simply going to go rook f7 the next move, and winning the queen. And at this point, the answer really struggled to find a good move. And I must say, it is quite complicated um, what you should do at this point. But it seems it is best for white to try and sacrifice your queen. But the best move seems to be d takes e5. And attacking the bishop on c4, so black needs to be quick now. Rook f7. I simply take the rook on a8. Queen takes and take the bishop on c4. So now white has a rook and a bishop. Uh, against the queen, but the pair of bishops is quite strong, and the black pieces are a bit strangely positioned, knight on a6, um, and also his center pawns are a bit weak, so white actually has perfect compensation for the queen here. Position is still balanced though, um, but, but very interesting. But it might be hard to evaluate when you're behind the board. So that's something he probably could have played. Instead he went bishop f1, but the position is very complicated, because there's so many moves you keep you need to keep into account every time. So black decided to take the bishop on f1, king takes, take the knight on f3, and now black is up a piece. Um, okay, white can take back on a6, but still black seems to have the initiative at this point, so he also decided to take the pawn on d6. A queen f8 threatening to take on f2. And here he also made the final mistake. Um, he should have played rook e2, simply defending the pawn. The knight still can't go anywhere, so that's good news. And um, if he goes queen c8 to try and protect the knight on a6, um, white can maybe just take the queen, rook takes, and take the pawn on e5. And this is going to be very difficult for black to stop these, these two pass pawns. So he has time to go rook e2 and then later grab the knight on a6. And then still the position is, is very interesting and it's hard to say who's better. Um, but he took on a6 with the queen, now allowing black to take the pawn on f2. King e1 and rook takes h2, and he simply resigns at this point. Um, just because queen f2 is coming, and if you play with like rook e2 to protect the f2 square, black simply checks on h1, king d2, and you grab the pawn on d6. And if you just count the pawns, you can see black is up one pawn, um, but it's gonna win a second pawn as well. And not even mentioning the terrible position of the white king. So Janssen just um, resigned the game here and yeah that was a crazy game even though it was only 19 moves uh, so many things happened. Um, so Price is also joining the lead together with Settler um, as they are playing each other today because they are the only one of four and a half out of five. You might wonder where are the others? Well for example Bauer had some issues um, beating a uh, young Dutch talented player Liam Vrolijk. Um, let's just jump to the interesting part and at this point it looked like Bauer um, well has the initiative with white that's quite obvious rook on the third rank is going to be interesting and at this point he just he played a few very nice moves a very nice moves it looked very beautiful he first went to the king side rook g3 king h8 now he swung his queen all the way back to the queen side queen a4 nobody saw this move coming bishop c8 now knight d6, jumping in there, and taking knight on c6, um, so black protected, rook c7, now the queen goes all the way back to g4 again, uh, to threaten checkmate, and in the meantime the black pieces are badly positioned, black is forced to go f6 to protect g7, now he took on f6, rook takes, he took on c8, rook takes, and now he has exchanged the pieces he wanted to exchange, and white is a very good position, However, he has to play the right move here. He went for the move c4 to open up the position and, and allow the bishop to attack the e6 pawn as well. Um, but much better would be in rook f3, which is a sneaky little move. But it's actually just winning a pawn. Um, if black decides to take the rook on f3, you can simply take on e6, an intermediate move, then take back the rook on f3, and you're up a pawn. And a very good position, of course. Um, 
if black decides to protect with rook e8, you simply have bishop g6, attacking your rook, and once again, next move will be rook takes f6, and you're winning the e6 pawn. Because um, if black tries his final defense, which is rook c f8 to protect the rook on f6, suddenly the f6 rook is pinned, and you can take on e6. And if black takes back, you just take the rook on f8 with check. And take back the rook on e6, for example. But there are more ways to get a very good position at this point. So he could have played rook f3 there and had a very good position. But instead he played c4. He takes bishop takes. And he does have an edge at this point. Um, and he eventually won the e6 pawn. As we can see, um, Liam decided to give up on the pawn here. Rook takes e6, but he exchanged so many pieces that the ending that arised was pretty drash, even though white is up a pawn. Uh, you know, black is quite active, attacking a few weak pawns, and um, at this point white even decided to play rook f1, which is such a passive move that black didn't really have any more trouble to secure the draw at this point. So, very nice game by Liam, even though Christian Bauer missed another good opportunity to win the game. Not the first time this tournament. Um, he does create the chances, which is already pretty uh, pretty good, but um, he should reward himself a little bit more. So, as I mentioned, um, sixth round is currently ongoing with uh, Blazers playing Settler, uh, the two players are 4 and a half out of 5, and then we have a lot of players 4 out of 5, um, trying to catch up with them. So, hopefully we get some more action on the final day here. And for now, I want to thank you for watching, and goodbye.